Good morning. My name is Valerie Webster and I'm here as a member of the Board of Trustees to share a few announcements with you before we get started today. Uh, these are on the back of the Order of Worship if you happen to have a paper copy of that. Check the hallway down here with the bulletin board and many of the announcements are posted there as well so you can tell we've got a lot going on here at the service. Uh, you can look at Realm or the website or the good old fashioned paper copy, whatever's most convenient for you. Uh, tomorrow, the 23rd of September, is the deadline for the October newsletter, so remember that, please. And then on Tuesday, we will gather again um, to write at 6 o'clock for food and 6.30 for um, postcard writing to um, try to get to our goal of 2,400 participants and postcards as we move forward through this important election time. And don't forget, November the 2nd is the auction night celebration here at the UU Church. So you can register for the chili cook-off or whatever other um, events capture your interest there. Um, details are on the website or on the bulletin board. And again, many of you have spent many hours moving furniture and putting in, we have new carpet installed here and it smells wonderful, so please, uh, drink only water in the service and save the coffee and tea for another area. Thank you, and we'll get started in just a few minutes. Okay. Okay. Why is it not working here? Yes. It's not us. Welcome to the Unitarian Universal Church of Augusta. We come here to create a blessed community. As we act together with compassion, reason, and respect, and we empower ourselves to become a more just society. My name is Chris Mauer, and I answer to she, her pronouns. And I'm co-hosting this service this morning with Reverend Nick, Patriarch Nunes and the wonderful people at the deck of Tech Deck, who we couldn't do without, and all of you wonderful people who are here. Well, today is the first day of spring, and as we enjoy, I mean, I want to, I want to, I 
wish it was the first day of spring, but it's not. It's autumn. So we look forward to winter. But now we can enjoy maybe cooler weather and maybe some beautiful colors that are so, so rich in the autumn. So we welcome you all here, and we're glad that you're here to share in the service with us. Cellist lighting words this morning are by Anastasi Garosh. As we light this flame of hope, may our congregation become a kaleidoscope of souls and people. In the presence of this flame, in me, in you, in us, is an invitation to sit at the table. May we tend our soul fire through these challenging and trying times to open the hearts and minds of all who enter our doors. Before, now light is less. <laughs> Good morning, I'm Jan Parsons, representing the pastoral care team here at UUC Augusta. This is a time every week when we gather to share those personal joys and sorrows that have come into our lives over this last year. We now invite our youngins to go continue their faith formation in the other way. Now is the moment in our service where we intentionally ground ourselves. We can do so physically by placing our feet upon the ground, crossing them, 
lowering your head or closing your eyes, perhaps. Clasping your hands as though in prayer. Whatever is most comfortable for you. Whatever connects you most to this moment. Spirit of love and life. Connector between all beings, all beings. Mystery that surpasses all understanding, yet beckons us to understand nonetheless. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for this opportunity to come together in community, in fellowship, and love. Thank you for moving us toward the love community each moment that we connect with each other. But of course, so much to be grateful for, and yet there is so much to grieve, so much that brings our souls down, suffering around the world, including senseless violence in the Middle East, Ukraine, the poor, the fear that our children are faced with each time they go to school, the uncertainty around what our upcoming elections will hold for us and the world, And yet, together, may we share in the faith that we can do good. We can move us toward and through the love community. Before we enter into a moment of silence, I invite you to hear the words and advice of the Reverend Angela Herrera. Don't leave your broken heart at the door. Bring it to the altar of life. Don't leave your anger behind. It has high standards in the world need vision. Bring them with you and your joy and your passion. Bring your loving and your courage and your conviction. Bring your need for healing and your power to heal. There is work to do have all that you need to do it right here in this room.
be blessed. May we be a blessing. Fall. The time we look forward to cooler weather, holidays coming up. We have Halloween and we have Thanksgiving and we have all these wonderful things that are happening in fall. But it's also a time when we all feel anxiety and some of us are fearful. We worry about this election season. We worry about what's happening, what's going to happen. This church is working diligently to help keep our democracy intact. It's also a sanctuary for us to come and share and work together to help alleviate some of those fears and anxiety. Help us to keep this, this church going so that we are always open to welcome all those who share our values and to know that we are a place of love. Um, I ask you to give now as you are willing and able, and we always take checks, cash, or checks. I'm having flashbacks to pine straw.
That's what a Georgia-grown friend of Janae has told her. And Janae had mentioned we were moving here nearly four years ago. I thought, oh, it can't be that bad. I've raked leaves before, couldn't be much different. Well, as I raked our yard for nearly half a day this past Monday, it was clear, sure they are similar in some ways, but very different in others. Either, work, either way, it's a lot of work to do. Fine straw has a way of sticking to things that sycamore leaves I'm used to never really did. They also have a way of falling down quickly, even as you work raking, or er erasing your progress almost immediately. By the time you get to the end of the yard, the pine straw blanket back at the beginning has already returned to at least a 200 thread count. I'll say one thing though about pine straw I really like. It can become a really great garden ground cover. And leaves are, are much better suited for composting. It's almost a faux pas to leave leaves on the ground for any length of time, though this expectation, of course, is a man-made construct. This leaves on the ground can really contribute to a healthy ecosystem, especially in old growth forests like the Mountain Retreat Center in North Carolina, beloved by many of us here for its innate nature. Whether it's leaves or pine straw, they fall in spades roughly the same time each year, autumn. That is until climate change, also man-made, distorts our seasons altogether. But I digress. As the foliage comes down, like a thin veil on the annual cycle of Earth, many of us welcome it. It certainly is my favorite season. It feels the most comfortable. It beckons holy days which drive and are driven by renewed community. We're gifted with the virtually endless flavor of pumpkin spice. We delight in the scary. And in many years, like this one, we're offered the renewed gift of democracy. A gift which we provide ourselves and each other. A gift which we must keep fighting for over and over again. Just as fall returns each year. Sometimes even as we have succeeded at raking the yard, the battles for justice and love, battles we thought we have already won, have already begun again. Fall, autumn, is the denouement of the year, the winding down, the approach of death. Yet as we approach it, something nevertheless feels very alive. Holy days are approaching. We use the least amount of air conditioning or heat, saving our bank accounts and the planet. Controlled fires are lit for warmth and ambiance. Like in the fire pit in our new backyard, a fire pit that my family used for the first time this last Monday. The small fire raged. We sat in peace and calm around it, grounded amid the falling pine straw, unperturbed when we were occasionally hit by their descent. We tended the fire together. And the approaching death of one thing is what fueled that fire. Approaching death beckons life in contemplation and work. As we sat at that fire, our kids, our future, excitedly threw in the fallen pine straw into the fire, each, each handful renewing the flame as it almost instantly roared back to life. I'm pretty sure most of you know I'm pretty radical. I'm pretty, I'm pretty left. And though radical, I'm nowhere near a revolutionary. At least not in the classic sense. I'm still drawn to it, though, like I am to autumn. Season kind of feels like a revolution when 
Earth's revolutionary cycle, within Earth's revolutionary cycle each year. This is especially true this time around as we approach the upcoming general election. At the very least, it's a moment of rapid transformation toward something new, an invitation to transformation. This fall also invites the potential death of careless, callous, power-hungry, mean-spirited decadence, pervasive for far too long, a process of deflating the air of superiority embodied by the beheading of Marie Antoinette and other bourgeoisie during the French Revolution. I knew you knew I was going to say something about France because of that title, right? The fall of her head happened in the fall of 19, uh, 1793. And our goals and values echo those of French revolutionaries, whose rallying cry then was liberté, égalité, fraternité, which translates to liberty, equality, fraternity. An impassioned cry against oppression, a call for freedom for everyone, a goal met through widespread and unflinching effort, if not a little violent. And of course, our work, our work isn't beheading the barriers, the human barriers of democracy. That's not what we're going to do. Our work is much more subtle and ambiguous. In our current context and climate, political violence is an affront to progress. I, ab I abhor the recent attempts. It's the easy way out. It takes no effort. To shift power structures that harm us, alongside Autumn, we must invite others into democracy as we invite democracy itself. It's easy to say that, and sometimes you talk a big game, but what if we were to do some concrete work together? And so here, here is some concrete work that we can do together to serve our values, to meet the transformational moment of this Please, please consider joining me in Athens on Saturday evening, this coming Saturday, for a UU The Vote rally in Canvas hosted by our friends at UU Athens. I'll send out a sign up for the four extra seats in my family's minivan uh, this coming Tuesday. I'll send that out on Tuesday. Please let me know if you're willing to drive for a carpool too. Don't do it right now. I won't remember. But let me know and we'll leave here at 2 p.m. The rally is from 4 to 7 p.m. In, in Athens. I hope that you'll be willing to come. More imminently, please join the Good Trouble team this afternoon at Arts in the Heart. I invite folks to meet at the Jazz Blues Tent located near 8th and Ellis downtown to hear Joseph play with Fabio Mann. It starts at 3 o'clock. Then we'll spread out from there to do a little canvassing. You will need to pay for a ticket if you don't already have one. If you can cover it yourself, that would be excellent. It's worth it. It's supporting a great cause. Yet, if the $20 per person prevents your participation, I will reimburse you. So even if you're somewhat introverted, you can do this. I, myself, you may not believe this. I'm introverted. It doesn't feel great to approach people I don't know to, to talk to them about a thing. But it's important work to do because it's the most effective work that you can do. And when you do so, You'll be passing out one of these cards provided by our, our good partners and friends at the League of Women Voters. If folks engage with you as you do this, you'll ask these questions. I invite you to ask these questions. Have you checked your registration? Easy enough, right? What is your voting plan? If you ask, if somebody starts to think about what, how they're going to vote, it's much more likely that they will indeed vote. Now, because we'll be doing this kind of uh, officially as a church, we cannot say uh, that we're voting for a particular candidate or we can't support a particular candidate, but we can say in this conversation, I'm voting my values. What values are you voting for? And no matter what they say, this is really important. I have it in all caps right here. No matter what they say, just listen if they opt to, choose, uh, if they opt to share with you. If they don't want to share or whenever they're done sharing, say thank you for your time, enjoy the rest of your festival, and move on. 
markets. Simple as that. It's just a moment of connection, a moment of democracy. If you're willing and able to join us, please come to the Good Trouble team meeting in my office about five or ten minutes after the service to get more info. Some of these cards, and perhaps one of these, you use a vote shirts. And then, on Tuesday, yes, you've heard us talk about our postcard writing project multiple times, but it's very important. I encourage as many folks as possible to come help us finish this project. We've written about a thousand already. We have a week to write and send 1,400 more. Sounds a lot, a lot, a lot, right? That's, it's a, a, but we can do it, even though it seems like a daunting task. This is really quite doable if we break down the math just a little bit. If every member of this church comes to help, or a number equal to our membership, which is right now at 116, each of us would only be responsible for writing about 10 postcards. That's not hard, right? And if you can't come, perhaps, perhaps you can invite two, three other people, in, like in person, specifically, are you going to come? Would you like to come? Of course, if you, you and them can come, it's the best possible option. Doing so, we'll be spreading the effort like pine straw ground cover, through which we'll later grow the things we desire, prevent the things we don't. Breaking up the effort among us, composting the sheer number of leaves yet untended upon the ground which will bring about new life. Leaves, which as they fall, whisper this invitation. Allez autumn et démocratie. Enter autumn and democracy. But we need you. This world needs you. Blessed be. Would you rise in body or spirit for our closing hymn, number 119, Once to Every Soul and Nation. your spirit for just a moment as I share these closing words by Reverend Kimberly Quinn Johnson. We are the ones we have been waiting for. We are not perfect, but we are perfectly fitted for this day. We are not without fault, but we can be honest to face our past as we chart a new future. We are the ones we have been waiting for. May we be bold and courageous to chart that new future. May we have faith in a future that is not known. We are the ones that we have been waiting for.
love better. <laughs> Thank you.